Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. I got uh, something special and something new for you future CCNAs and CSENTs today and some good CCNP material here as well. I uh, can't call it viewer mail because it's really questions sent in via Twitter, which is our really preferred method of communication for this one. But uh, I've got a question here that I'm going to put up on the screen in a moment from a Bulldog out there, and we're going to use this to get a practical lab started. So quite a bit of work today coming with Telnet because the question was, how can I set up Telnet to allow one person to be placed into enable mode while allowing the other to only look at stuff? And I'll assume stuff meant the config. And you do have this scenario arise because let's say that you've got a tech guy who's going to connect to your router, but you don't necessarily want to give them the immediate power to just start writing, write erasing, right? Or erasing some of your config or let's see if this works. That's not really a very good idea. So we're actually going to do a, a full Telnet review here today. Let's go ahead and call up the rack and I'll slide that over a little bit. And also let me mention that too. If you like, if you have a question you'd like to see answered here, uh, just tweet me at CCIE12933 and we'll tackle that here. Uh, no emails for this particular feature. I'm actually phasing out email and getting much more into Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn communications because unfortunately uh, some people in the world have decided that I'm here to do their homework for them so the email gets answered a little bit slower these days. Let's go ahead and dive right back into today's lab. And I'm just going to ping our remote partner. We're just right across an Ethernet segment. Nothing fancy here at all. But what's going to happen then if I try to Telnet to a router where nothing has been set yet? I'm going to get that message we just saw. Password required but none set. It's rare that a Cisco router or switch is even going to tell you that because the trend really with anything, Cisco or otherwise, is not to give the person any clue as to why they can't connect. We're just telling them they can't connect. So let's go over to router 3 and take a look at the config. And we'll just look at the VTY lines, which are always going to be near the bottom. And we have the login here, but there is no password set. So we'll just go ahead and put in a password. What happens if I enter login again? Okay, I wanted to show you this message because you do. I do see this from time to time uh, in messaging as well. It's like, you know, I, I broke my router because it's got five lines of login disabled. I'm definitely not making fun of you for thinking that because I thought the same thing <laughs> you know, like 10 years ago, whatever it was, when I got my first rack and I saw this message, it's like, great, you know, I just got this router and now I broke it. Well, it's just login disabled on your VTY lines until the password is set. And that's it. So we'll just go ahead and put a password of CCNA here just for fun. And this is, uh, this is a one-size-fits-all situation. But what's going to happen when I go over to Router 2 then and try to connect to this router via Telnet? You know exactly what's going to happen? That's a really good practice exam question. Well, I get prompted for the password, and that's lovely. And I entered it. It's not going to show up. You're not going to get asterisk. You're not going to get anything. You're just going to get dropped in. And here I am you know, at user exec. So I'm going to type enable and I can't get into it because no password has been set. The password is required over uh, on router three. If you're going to have VTY people coming in, your telnet people coming in, the VTY line password is only for the connection. By default, they're going to dro get dropped into user exec mode and then that is it. They can't do anything else unless they know the enable password and we haven't even set one of those yet. So we have a couple of options here as well. And what we could do is go to the VTY lines. And what privilege level am I going to set here? If I want everybody coming in via Telnet to be put into enable mode immediately, what do I want to set there? I want to set 15, privilege level 15, good command to know. Let's go back to router 2 actually. I'll run that same Telnet command. I put in CCNA, and now we're in, and you'll notice that I'm in enable mode immediately. So I'll go ahead and log out of that. But that's not quite what we want either, because just having a one-size-fits-all password and everybody goes straight to the highest privilege level is really not what we want to do. So what we could do is create a local database of users and tie that into the VTY lines. And please get over your fear 
or anxiety of the word database because this is going to be the simplest little database you're ever going to see in your life. I had the same situation happen. It's like, oh no, we got to build a database. And I just thought it was this incredibly complicated thing and it's incredibly not. So what we will do first is go down to the VTY lines and we're going to remove that privilege level 15 command and we're going to take off the password and we're going to remove the login. So that doesn't leave much, does it? <laughs> we pretty much annihilated our VTY line because now as soon as the save finishes, we're going to build a quick little database and we're going to let one user telnet in and be put into enable mode immediately. We're going to have another user telnet in and be put into user exec mode and they really won't be able to do much of anything because they're not going to be able to get out of that. So quickly, let's go ahead and first off create this particular database. That's it. Username, password. But I did not put a privilege level mode there. Okay. So just give me uh, another name here. What magazine do I have later? I can't use that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I could, but I'm not going to. Let's use, uh, let's just put Whole Foods right here since it's on ink this month. Now, this is kind of odd with the privilege level because it's right in the middle of all of this set user privilege level you're not going to say username whole password foods because you can't put the privilege level at the end of it. it's got to go in the middle and then password foods okay so i assigned whole foods a privilege level of 15 and i didn't assign one at all to chris bryant so now we've got to go to the vty lines and tell the VTY lines to use this database instead of some password we put on the VTY lines. So what we will do there is use this local option. Local password checking. That's it. That's all that means is that we're going to look locally for the password. And there's not even an option there. And that's it. So let's go over to router 2 and try telnetting in. And now you'll notice I'm being prompted for a username. We weren't getting that a minute ago. So let's go ahead and just put Chris here. That will appear, but the password will not. And you'll notice now that I'm at router 3, but I'm in user exec. And if I try to get into enable mode, I literally can't get into it because we have not set an enable password on router 3. So that would just allow that user just to stay at user exec and that's it. And there's not much you can do from there, especially as far as configuring goes. Now, let's try going in as that privileged user. And there you go. And check that enable prompt out. And now this user is in the highest privilege level and can pretty much do just whatever they want. So let's just do a quick show config there. And you can see that username Chris password zero Brian. It's going to put in the level of encryption there, which you know is just sitting there. Um, but when you enter privilege here, you just put the number right after that. And if you don't put one in, it's assumed that you want them to have a privilege level of zero as well. And what that means, of course, is they can come into user exec mode and that is it. So a lot of stuff going on there with Telnet. We're at the 847 mark. So let's take a few seconds here just to go over some of this because Telnet's going to be all over your exams. First off, you're always using the VTY lines here. And if you are putting a one-size-fits-all password on, you are using the login command and the password command. That by default is going to let users Telnet in with that password, but it's going to be in exec mode, user exec mode, once they authenticate. If you want them, everybody to come in and have privilege level 15, then you put privilege level 15 on the VTY lines. But in the real world, and quite possibly on your exam, what you're going to do instead is create a database like this and assign privilege levels. And when you assign privilege level 15, as we saw, that means the user comes in, they authenticate, they're put in enable mode, and they go about their merry way. If they come in in level zero, privilege level zero, they're not going to be able to do much at all. Hope you enjoyed this practical lab. Like I said, send me, send me some ideas for some more labs and questions on Twitter. And also, please check out my courses on Udemy. Some free, some paid, all great. And almost 10,000 students just like you 
are in those courses right now. I'm Chris Bryant, and as always, thanks for making TBA part of your Cisco Certification Success Story.